Hello, my name is Martin and this is 3D Printing Iceland. In this video I'm going to design a small bracket to hold a power strip on the side of the table. Currently I have used double-sided tape to hold up a power strip but it keeps falling off and I don't want to spend endless amount of double-sided tape to hold it in place so I want to make something more permanent. So let's have a look after the intro. So let's have a closer look with a close-up camera. So this is a situation. I had this power strip here on the end of the table holding up several adapters and connectors for my streaming PC. Um, the tape keeps ripping off and it's uh, just a double-sided tape that I have used and I used like a hot glue from a glue gun at one point and that didn't work for too long either and I want to design more permanent solution so what I have to do is to draw up a small bracket in Fusion 360 and, and put it in, in place so the first thing I really need to do is to make measurements of the table and measurements of the power strip so I have my calipers and my notepad here to, to make the measurements and I like to write down the numbers before I start Fusion 360 just makes it easier to make a, a small drawing on a paper before you do it in CAD so the width of the table is 28.7 millimeters and the table feet are underneath here so I can't I have to measure out the distance from the edge of the table to the feet. So that is 40, uh, 34, so that's the maximum space I can have for the underneath side of the bracket. And I really don't want to go too much on the table itself, just maybe a short distance, maybe 13 millimeters, so the bracket will just slide on the table and I might do uh, some holes for screws but now I have to measure out the power brick and that's 50 53 this is 41 um, the power brick is not flat on this side, on the bottom side, so I'm going to measure out the width here. So this is 47, maximum is, is 53. So now I have the basic measurements. This is the, the table and this is the power strip. So here's the side surface, the inner diameter is 47 and the outer diameter is 53 so that are the basic measurements um, it's, it's the power brick is symmetrical so this side and this side is, is the same so if I have the bracket with this small part here aligning to the curve uh, it should have a good fit so now I'll go into Fusion 360 and, and start modeling. So this is in no way meant to be a tutorial on Fusion 360, just my method of, of doing this. So I'm going to start out creating a sketch. And I'm going to draw out the dimensions for the table. So those are the dimensions of the table itself and I want the power strip to be flush against this edge so it doesn't stand up from the edge so my bracket needs to be like five millimeters thick and I 
want to call 41 plus 13 out because the power strip is 41 and the this part here is 13 and then five millimeters again down And I forgot the material thickness here on the end of the table. I want that also to be five millimeters. So I'm going to add, add five millimeters to that line. So for, so for this line, it needs to be 41 for the power brick. And it needs to be five for the material thickness. And it needs to be 13 for, for the account for this one so this is going to be 59 millimeters um, i want this to be five millimeters also on the top so now i have the basic upper shape of the bracket and um, now i need a line that is 53 millimeters from this side. And this will be 41. So that's a basic shape of the object and um, now before I insert the, the bent curve here for the power brick I'm just gonna extrude this and, and print out a uh, sample so I can fit it in and see if I need to do any adjustments to the measurements so for this I just extrude this two millimeters and have this thin object and I'm going to print this out and see if it, if it fits so I'll make a SDL out of this object I'm using the new version of Slick 3R Prusa edition since I have it laying like this I have to lay it down for this print and I'm going to print it on my CR10 this is just a, just a small sample to to make it fit, fit so now as I have Octobit configured for the slicer uh, and the newest slicer has the option to start print after upload so I can just tick this box here and it will start the print so if we go to the website for the octoprint the g-code starts to print immediately so now the bed is heating up so we have to wait for that one so now I have the test piece and I'm going to fit it here on the table and this seems to fit pretty good here so that's good um, and then for the power brick this also seems to be a good fit so now you can see the small side here that is sloping down on the power brick um, I'll have to fill this up and make it a good fit and the plan is to to make it a tight fit and then slide it on from this side so it will hold on this end to the power brick so the small small piece that has to go on here will, will hold it in place so don't have to glue this to the power brick it will just slide off the end so now i'm gonna edit the sketch again and i'm gonna add in the small chamfer here for the head i'm gonna make myself a construction line it will go from the middle and it was 47 so it's 47 divided by two and and in the opposite direction, 47 divided by 2. I'm going 
to mirror this over I'm gonna have to create a construction line that's in the middle of this over here I can select this line and select this line and select this as a mirror and just create this line and now I have this curve shape to fit in the power brick and I'm going to extrude this again um, just going to delete this extrude this two millimeters again and see how it fits the power brick this again see how it fits so now I have this part that should fit around the power brick and as you can see my cat wants to eat it straight away <laughs> so I'm gonna try to fit this and I have to adjust it a little bit with this Was too, it's a little bit too tight so for me to get it in and uh, now I see the issue the, the part the power brick is not symmetrical on this side on this side so I have to make a small adjustment maybe you can see the, the gap here if I push this in I have to adjust it a little bit I'm just removing the old part This need to be a little bit wider. So the part on this side is 46. So now there's more space on this side and this one goes a little bit further in so I'm going to try to print this out and see how it fits. I created the skets again and um, somehow I made the mistake of having this value 41 millimeters in the old skets so I just drew up this skets and I'm gonna fit it again. I was going back to the, this bracket and I noticed it was uh, pulling a little bit out so it was not fitting correctly so I just remade the basic skets with the correct measurements so I'm gonna make the changes 
again in Fusion 360 and, and print it out. So at the moment I'm, I'm printing out this original test piece again just to make sure it fits properly. So this is the part of the process you, you find sometimes you have to back step a little bit. But now I think I got the basic measurements correct. I can edit in the fillets that were here and, and here. So I'm going to create the construction lines for it. And I'm gonna print out this piece. And since my CR10 is printing, I'm gonna print on my MK2. And now I've printed out a new bracket with the curves, and now the curves are symmetrical. I think I just made the mistake in the first bracket, so I'm gonna test with this one. Now, as you can see, now it fits pretty good so I'm quite happy with that so now I think have the profile in a good place I can continue the design so now instead of extruding two millimeters I want to extrude 20 millimeters here I want to create a fillet and I want to pull it out so it is nice and flush like this so it will have good strength and to mount it to the table I want to create a hole uh, to screw it in from this side and I'll create a sketch on this plane um, I want to create a hole in the middle that in the middle here that is one centimeter from the from this side and in the middle here so I'm going to do a circle and I want to create a four millimeter hole um, so this will be a hole for the screw and I want to extrude that out so it comes out in here um, I'm gonna use a screw that has a slope to it so I have to create a slope here so now I've got created a hole for the screw and I want the screw to go in but this hole fits the, the diameter of the screw itself, but the head has to go inside of the plastic. So the head will go in here, and I'm going to create a new circle. And this circle will be 7 millimeters. And this will be extruded. And this is going to be offset. I'm going to have it offset by 10 and then going to extrude 10 so now the extrude starts here and goes out and since the screw has a small chamfer in it this has to be aligned to the screw so it's going to have a chamfer 
I'm going to put two, a little bit more. One, two, five. So now the chamfer in the screw can sit here. And the screw will stand out 13 millimeters and will go 13 millimeters into the table. So now I think the, the basic bracket is, is ready and I'm going to print this out and see how it goes. And see if I need to do adjustments. So now the print is finished and I tested out the screw and found out as I printed out like, like this on the bed, the holes weren't accurately round it because of how the bridge on the hole prints so i pushed this in and, and got this to work so the dimensions of this piece here and, and this is correct now and i'm gonna change the model a little bit so the hole is a little bit bigger and then i'm gonna <coughs> add some fillets to this piece to make it look nicer so let's get back into fusion so here's so here I left off with the hole and I changed the diameter of the hole. So now the hole is 4.5 millimeters instead of 4, and it's 9 millimeters the bigger hole. I just uh, adjusted the chamfer here. So now the hole is in a better shape, and then I added a fillet on this side here to make this part round. This is the part that goes up on the table. Um, and finally I add some fillets on the sides here. So this is the, the final piece and I printed out three of those models. So here they are. I printed this out in Colorfab PLA and they're in a brown, light brown color similar to the table. So it was the closest filament in color that I would get um, and here you can see the, the fillets I'm making it more smooth and here's the end that will be on top of the table so this edge will not be sharp so if I run into it I won't hurt myself so now I just have to install this and I'm going to do that So already even though I haven't screwed it in, it is holding pretty good shape. Um, I have to remove my computer. It's, the computer is here underneath and I can't get to the screw holes unless I remove the computer so I can't record the process of, of fitting the parts. But this is pretty much the final uh, place for the parts to, to be. And now I can take out the power supply and and it's in a good good position here. So just to have a look at the part again. So it's coming out pretty great on the Prusa MK2 2.5 printer. I printed out with that printer. So, um, so now I'm get, just gonna install those. So that was my process of creating a small bracket to hold my power strip to the table. I want this power strip to be a part of the table that connects power to my computer and, and camera and, and several things here on the on the table. So um, I think this worked quite well. Um, like I said in the beginning, it's no way meant to be a Fusion 360 tutorial, just how I did it. And I did some mistakes in the beginning by not measuring correctly. and. Then I found out I did a mistake also in the initial sketch, uh, so the part wasn't fitting quite right, and I created a se secondary sketch that was done in a correct way. So that was just a part of the process, and uh, I, I'm not going to edit that out. It just shows that you can do mistakes and go back and, and fix fix the things by d d fixing up the sketches. 
So I hope this at least gave you some information on how I go about doing things with Fusion 360 to fix things. So for now, I, I thank you for watching and I hope you like this video and, and if you do, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. I really like getting comments and responding to, to you guys. So for now, I thank you for watching and see you next time.